Hello and welcome to back to another Crown Day NHL, which have been a little bit hiatus, but we're I'm going full frontal back again with the trade deadline closing last night. So we have to go through all the brilliant trades and all that and discuss a little bit what happened in this trade. What was the experience we all had with it or rather mine experience and you can tell yours in the comments because this year was better than the last year um, simply because there was greater players moved this one I believe and maybe have greater impact this year than the last one so I'm happy I'm have some papers down here so we will I will uh, pick them up at some point and uh, read from them the trades that's the most interesting that have been the ones that we all feel like this could be an important thing maybe now straight in the playoffs or really impact in the future so I will start off with the ones I haven't written down because it concerns the Pittsburgh Penguins and their trades and everyone knows that they traded for themselves to Douglas Murray, Morrow and of course the great Jerome Ginla. I mean two captains and one that have been a great franchise player for, um, uh, for the San Jose Sharks. I mean, it's just, to that team already, to get those players is really important. But, like last night's game against the Rangers, it will be kind of, they had a great team working out really good at the moment. And nothing went wrong more than um, Crosby getting a puck in the face, which kind of hurts. Yeah, who knows? I mean, who could tell that the puck in the face would hurt, really? So, my overall opinion so far on those trades, I'm not going to agree in who get to the others, uh, what the other teams got, because uh, mostly it's just picks and depth and that kind of uh, players go in the other directions. So, not much to say more about that from the Pittsburgh going out. But uh, they're going very all in this year. But really, it's all in that which they will, will not lose that much after this season, I believe. Because they will still have Crosby and Malkin and Neil and all those great players that are the franchise. The Tang, can't forget his great puck mover and uh, incredible player. Fleury at... When he, he gets his mind to it, it's a great goalie, but um, his uh, mind can be, he can get frustrated and uh, like last night against the Rangers, he didn't look all that calm and collected, I would say. But uh, he's French Canadian, so maybe that's something in his blood to be quite frustrating person, uh, who knows. Well, I shouldn't talk more about the Pittsburgh Penguins. It's uh, uh, more than I would like to say some things about Jerome Iginla. Iginla, all these years have been a great player for the Calgary Flames and a great person. And honestly, I is there much more to say about it more than he's have been a great player and. Who knows, uh, if he maybe can get the Stanley Cup now, can he get the Hall of Fame? He's certainly Hall of Fame in Calgary's book. He should be, but um, I don't know. Tell me your opinions. I, 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 I don't really know what, how you would rank some players in Hall of Fame category, because in Gilla have had... And Hall of Fame season almost 
in my opinion, but uh, that's I think all the great players should be in the Hall of Fame, even though it will maybe take five years be before before after after he have ended his career. It maybe take longer for Gilla to be in the Hall of Fame. So be it. But someday, hopefully, he, if he also gets to Stanley Cup. But even if he doesn't, look at Sandin. He got into the Stanley Stanley <laughs> Hall of Fame. Without, with only playing for Toronto, so, and lastly ended his career in Vancouver, but um, a Toronto player through and through, I would say. So, we're gonna move on, and uh, I have my um, helping uh, hand here, because, um, you know, re remembering all these traits is, you know, kind of hard. So I have them down here so you won't see them. Okay, so first I like to talk about this the, um, the defenseman St. Louis picked up. They picked up uh, Justin Leopold from Buffalo and uh, Boomister from Calgary Flames. And uh, um, it's a great pickup. They have now got a really good defense. They got a good defense beforehand. But uh, with nine defensemen in the roster, I don't, uh, I don't think uh, they got rid of any at the last second uh, in the trade. But uh, they have a lot of good defensemen now, and um, honestly, the St. Louis only have to start playing well. It's as simple as that. They haven't, they haven't been. I thought they were better. Last year, this year they have been goodish, <laughs> okay slash good, they, but they can much better than that. And with the team they have, I would expect better from them. So we can't. Ca I, I I will I will say that St. Louis can be a surprise in the playoffs. I get the feeling they can be. Like the Kings last, everyone says St. Louis is a good team, but because they haven't played well, maybe they will hit that form, high form, right on top of the playoffs like the uh, Kings did last year. And uh, But I hope that many teams hit their form so we can have a good, solid playoffs, because last year... I'm going I said it before last year was a disappointment for me. Really disappointing playoff. The first round was good, after that it was horrendous in my opinion. I didn't see I didn't feel like any series was good. Honestly, even the final I I almost I watched a little bit hardly anything from finals because I know knew that the Kings were going to win it. And they, that's uh, like, how fun is this? I know they are going to win it. And uh, maybe you would say you had missed something if they w weren't, but I, 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 it was 95% for me chance that it would happen. So I'm gonna stop talking about the Kings. But, um, but they picked up the defenseman. Kings, uh, Robin Regeer from uh, also Buffalo. They got rid of another player. Uh, Buffalo was very active in uh, getting uh, their team worked around, and uh, and uh, hopefully they will uh, become a better team next year and be a team that doesn't look like they will uh, fail. As um, but uh, I, one thing I would like to say is, even though Miller wasn't uh, shipped away this trade, I still feel like we will see him move this summer. With all those, all these things around him and talks and everything, I feel like Miller deserves a new start. I'm not saying he's he, nobody's saying he's bad, but I think 
for him personally. I don't think he is going to get back into Vesna capability if he doesn't move. He, he can prove me completely wrong. I'm happy with those things. When a goalie just steps out and lights out. If he could be that, all props to him. But sometimes you just have to move and get on with your life. And not just stay still and just feel like you're not going anywhere or something. Or I can do this but really you haven't got the confidence anymore in that. Or whatever. So. Of more than that, there are more, just more minor stuff, but uh, Hansus going to Chicago and they replace him with Rafi Torres, which many thought was kind of strange. They could just keep Hansus and not get Torres. It's, uh, it's kind of weird. I always thought that, thought that weird about how every these players, depth players are moving around from team to team, you just sign them one year and then they move to another team next year. Why can't you just sign? I mean, if he was good that year, why not try and sign him next year and have also the, the fourth liners being signed again? I don't understand. Why can't they play there season after season? It's, a, it's just my opinion. I, I am. Maybe the teams feel like they need a new type of energy guy every season and you I, it must be a pain in the ass to move all the time for those kinds of players but um, yeah I, I'm trying to recollect if I can remember any players that key, that are grittier players that play in the fourth lines and stuff that will keep being there that is uh, on the older side I would say there are fourth liners that will um, that are, are still then are being restricted free agents after a season but um, also the deaf players being staying in one team for longer times so but um, all that said and done and uh, that's my opinion to the matter and uh, yeah Dallas making moves I'm l liking. I, w I will say Derek Roy who I heard from Buffalo was a guy that was not a good locker room guy and uh, he wasn't uh, intending to, he would have played good for the Dallas things I've seen and he's a great player and all but he, he wasn't intending to sign with Dallas so they moved him to uh, Vancouver for a uh, uh, good Connaughton is it Kevin Connaughton and the second round pick this year which I think is a great return and apparently Connaughton is almost NHL ready or even if even is NHL ready for some people so that's a good pickup and uh, they also picked up uh, uh, Gons was it uh, in uh, a trade against uh, Thomas Windsor to the Colorado Avenue so uh, they're adding some defense and uh, some good players and also uh, they got some forward returns in the trade for who, Jarmir Jager who um, wanted probably play some playoff plus the the, the the team New and Dyke and all wanted to trade him to get some players in return because but with the Boston missing out on Iginla they wanted a player and when Jagger came available of course they would go for him and uh, and he uh, was a player that uh, they picked up and so um, Dallas got good players in that return too this is good trades that the Dallas Stars have done. The Steve Ott trade for Derek Roy last year wasn't a good one. And uh, I feel like Dallas kind of 
doesn't really know that much what the, uh, and also Eric Cole against Michael Ryder it's uh, he wanted uh, I feel like Ryder for me is a b better player than Cole at the moment but um, they wanted a big guy I, I uh, you can't get hung up on this I feel like the NHL is hung up on specific types you are that kind of type we need that kind of type because they can do that little more than that but this team may become worse I mean for me look at I don't think I still think that uh, Vancouver should have kept Hodgson in uh, Cody Hodgson in uh, Vancouver and not gotten uh, Sakasian is his name right they wanted a big strong guy and now they're talking about and they needed now Derek Roy to be a guy when they could have just had Hodgson I, I'm, for me it boggles me I, I sometimes I feel like they do some hasty de decisions and uh, that is one of them in my opinion and uh, we all can uh, some decisions trades are just the devils trying to get deals done and they only pick up Steve Sullivan who have been horrendous this season I mean a player that if you have watched him his games playing every, you would see that he have been appalling this season I mean I know he have been good other years and he was goodish in Pittsburgh last year but I, I just for me I just, you know, just don't understand sometimes the trades hopefully he can prove me wrong in Devils but they needed so much more than just him I'm just saying that I feel like the Devils I have felt for a long time that they would probably end up uh, not getting to the playoffs because Parisi is I don't, I I I have hard time seeing how the Devils is going to last in the long run. I don't see how they're going to last long term. It's just they do they do good in the playing that they the, the, how they play at the moment but I don't know next year I I don't see I, I'm just gonna stop saying what the, because I don't really have more to add to it more than I don't know what they're going to do I have no idea myself but uh, they need Kovalchuk to play almost 30 minutes soon because uh, that man is a beast even though he makes a lot of turnovers of course he makes more turnovers than other players because he plays so much more time than other players but uh, I think the upside is much more better than the turnovers that he makes so I will uh, move on to which can be interesting right shall we go for the Rangers and add in Columbus at the end there we start off with firstly Ryan Klo to uh, the Rangers and I that's that's a trade that proves that stuff like if Stalin suddenly works for David because Klo proved it last night just he got three points two goals one assist in his first game and he haven't scored a single goal for the Sharks I mean sometimes you have to just turn over a new leaf but I, I still think Chloe is so much better player than Sullivan so I, I think Rangers look like a team last night that was something every Rangers fans should be happy about because they look like the Rangers again and Klo, I don't have to talk more than that. Many teams were after him and they got him and he have 
he proved himself against the Penguins. But the top, the trade that was one of the biggest, if not the biggest, was Gabrick going to Columbus Blue Jackets against. <coughs> I'm losing my voice suddenly for some reason against um, uh, Brassard, Dorset, and more, and some picks. And also they got rid of two players to Columbus, Parlet and uh, Delisle, I think his name is, which I didn't see last night. So uh, I don't know much about uh, the Rangers player that got traded Delisle and Parlet, but uh, Gabrick have never fitted in, in my opinion, in how, how Tortorella and the Ray, a Rangers team is. I did never, I never thought that was a good trade. Of all the great players they went out to get and got Gabrick, we all see the goals, but he scored goals. That's the that more than that you won't get, in my opinion, because he really doesn't. He's not. He he plays team game, but for me he doesn't feel like a team that improves the team as a, how the team plays, uh, I mean... Oh yeah, yeah... So, back again from whatever problem I had. So, Gabrick, I believe I was talking about. It uh, took a little time. So, um, I can repeat a little quickly and hopefully you won't crucify me. Gabrick, I never thought he was uh, fitting in in the Rangers organization and uh, so I think it's a good decision to trade him and uh, the players that have got in return Brassard did a good game more also we all will see it in the long run but, but I honestly thought that the uh, Rangers needed more players and uh, Honestly, I don't think they needed Gabrick anymore, and uh, that much he didn't fit in, and he didn't like Tortorella, and Tortorella didn't li like Gabrick. So I don't. I never thought they uh, earlier they needed him, but with Nash, I don't think they need him. They need more good all-round players, and I, I think uh, trading Anismov in uh, the trade going to Columbus was a dumb idea. I thought he was more important that they gave him credit for. He's a great player and was honestly one of the most valuable player going to the other team. In my opinion, probably not in many others, but my opinion, Artem Menisimov is a brilliant player and he will be a brilliant player for Columbus in many years now. He will be one of the be best players on in that team, in my opinion, he will be that. But uh, we will wait and see. So, uh, the Columbus, did they make anything else worthwhile? Right. <laughs> the lol moment of the trade is when <laughs> Philadelphia traded Leighton and uh, 2015, 14, 15, 15 third round pick to against Steve Mason. This should have just kept Bobrovsky. Honestly, I didn't understand. I mean Bobrovsky did amazing rookie season as well. He just uh, didn't uh, um, his energy didn't quite they had to make uh, if they kept going with Bobrovsky I think he would be the important goalie that Philadelphia needed and look he's tearing up right now for the uh, Columbus Blue Jackets so I don't know it's just hilarious that deal happened at all and uh, but uh, maybe Steve Mason can come back from the dead who knows and uh, we move on to the Tampa Bay Ottawa trade that is Ben Bishop going down to Tampa to compete against Anders Lindback for the first spot. I think 
Lindbeck would probably be slightly ahead if not Bishop can be really really amazing at this end because Lindbeck is injured and um, but uh, I I Lindbeck felt like he was getting uh, getting better now in the end before but he, now he got injured they needed to get another goalie to uh, compete for me it's just the patience hasn't been there and the defense is the problem in the Tampa Bay Lightning that it's not the goalies you can blame the goalies all you like I mean problem is the goalie situation because of Lindbeck's injury now but Bishop and Lindbeck hopefully can uh, pull it out of the bag but for me the defense is what's what's the problem is and it's quite I don't understand why they I, I mean that Murray got uh, in Ottawa got the pick in this trade as well I, I straight swap I would believe it but because of the depth uh, Tampa has but uh, I mean many say that they got uh, the better end of the stick you would say and honestly that kind of level of players will just make Ottawa I mean Ottawa for the future they look they do great this year with these players wonder what where they can be in a couple of years Ottawa is a franchise I'm really interested in seeing how they will develop because they can do it with these players and when the de these players actually develop and become older and more wiser and better it's just I'm just so happy your brain so exciting all of that so I have nothing more to say about the trade so I will move on to what's more interesting Scott Hannon to the San Jose Sharks. It's a rental player, seventh round conditional pick. I mean, Scott Hannon, good average player, will probably play in the last defensive pair. But nothing more to say about that. Uh, UC Jokinen, who Ottawa tried to get rid of with the uh, in waivers but haven't been able to and now the uh, penguins picks him up he's a good player who who have uh, haven't got a good year i one thing i will stop myself here is that a lot of players that have been bad this year can be good next season mainly because how the season have been everyone haven't been 100% with their training, everyone haven't been in form uh, with the lockout being as it have been. I feel like some players have just gotten into the season wrong and the players that have played hockey in Europe, I mean it's sad kind of that that they do and many say that they lack heart for the NHL and all that but I mean for the good of the NHL season, some players have evolved because of this or gotten back to the form they were before when they maybe had bad seasons before, the season before or whatever. Some players needed it, so I can't say blame them completely for doing it. So, but the next season some players will return to their form again I believe with the whole summer training with um, pre-season all that and good sh and a whole season some players will return to the former self I believe so Wade Redden is one of the defensemen right one of the defensemen from St. Louis left and that was Wade Redden who goes to the Boston Bruins where he will get back to playing with Shara 
that was a good team a couple of years ago. Interesting. Good pick up there from Boston. Boston is a team you don't have to say much about. They're good. They just added uh, more good players to their already good roster. I mean, it's nothing futuristic or anything. It's just a good player. And uh, with that, trades, I think I will move on to other bigger things that happened l late. We have a big trade happened between the Minnesota Wild and uh, the Buffalo Sabres, where Minnesota got Jason Pomovin and a pick, yes, fourth round pick in the 2014 draft. And the captain, Jason Palmer, another captain moving. It's um, interesting that um, Palmer is a good player, but was he worth the return they got? But honestly, Minnesota is so stacked with talent. And I mean, it's almost like the, I mean, giving it away. I mean, Minnesota for me is set for many many years to come so them losing Johan Larsson and Matt Hackett and uh, a couple of picks many say it's ex expensive for players who have been not that good because how Buffalo have been this year but he can be good and but the first round pick I'm Doubting, I mean, the prospects are really good at that uh, still, but um, yeah, they got, gave up a lot. And uh, all, as this draft, uh, this trade was, was I going to say, not draft, it's only about time will tell. We can't, this is a trade that you will know two years from now, or even three years from now, if it was good or not. Then, for the last thing for the night, I chose to do it because it was dragged on and late last night. Or not late, here in Sweden it was late, late in the... It was uh, the trade where Caps said they were going to do a press conference about the trade they ha had did and everyone was like oh the trade Novechkin, Beckstrom, uh, Mike Green it was many talked about uh, Neuvert uh, go going against Miller like wh how people could believe that they why would Buffalo need me uh, Neuvert in return. That didn't make any sense in, at all in my prediction. That Washington could try to get Miller is completely understandable, but I don't see Holtby is still a good goalie, so if they believe in him, they should keep believing in him. But I mean, because they picked up Matt Hackett, the only thing that would make sense is. If they put Matt Hackett in the deal for the going, the trade for Matt Hackett and traded him off to uh, Washington or something like that. But um, so people are talking uh, Neuvert or Mike Green or many Ribeiro, but they uh, signed Ribeiro earlier on that day. So. He wasn't uh, going to leave or trade it. I would be very surprised if they traded him. But um, so with that said, Philip Forsberg went from uh, Washington Capitals, the first round uh, round pick for Washington uh, 2012, and they got in return Michael Latta and uh, Martin Erat. And Martin Erat was the guy with. Who had to waive his no trade clause. That was the thing that everyone. Oh my god somebody has removed a no trade clause. But it was in the uh, Nashville team. And um, I 
I, I'm, I'm going to be honest here. For me, Philip Forsberg has the potential of being among the one of the great, uh, great uh, Swedish players in the league. Level of Beckstrom in uh, uh, Washington, or uh, almost like uh, Philip Forsberg, you know, Philip, Peter Forsberg, or Matt Sundin, or a forward like that. He have the potential to be as good as them. I would compare him more maybe to maybe uh, Alfredson in in uh, or Naslon. I mean, he have the potential to be one of the, these great players. And you give him away to for Martin Erat and Michael Latta. What the fuck? Ah, McPhee, fuck sake, are you doing? Sorry, but what the fuck? They stole him at the... He was able to go to them because everyone passed off him for some reason uh, to get defensemen. And they said he's a steal at that place. Yeah, because he can't be a bloody amazing player. What the hell? I mean, Martin Erath is, is a good player, but he haven't got... Have, a good season this year. It just Michael Lata sure have to produce if he. I mean, he's the is almost have to become a player, a regular on the Washington to this t to this trade trade being good. But I don't know. I, I, it just boggles me. And uh, with that all said, that will be it for tonight. I uh, hope you guys love this show. <laughs> Why? I don't know. But uh, it will have some audio issues because of something is a little bit broken in the camera. I don't know what. But I will have to do it like this for a while because it's hard hard to sync all the audio otherwise it's very very annoying but anyways thanks you guys for watching and I will see you guys another time and I should promote myself I'm more crown story on Twitter I'm crown and love you all guys bye